So today I'm going to talk about an exciting family of quantum materials known as superconductors. These have the potential to transform the energy landscape because they conduct electricity with absolutely no loss of energy. So what you see in the background there is an aerial view of the night sky. And the lights there show where electricity is consumed the most. We consume a lot of electricity and the carbon impact of this is massive. Just Google and Facebook, their data centers, by 2020, their carbon footprint will equal that of the entire airline industry. So clearly, something needs to be done to change this picture. Renewable energies are the way to go. But if you look to see where wind energy is concentrated, it's offshore. Where solar energy is concentrated, it's in deserts. How do we move this to the areas where electricity is most consumed? AC cables cannot do this. They lose 30% of energy, and they're just not stable enough. So you may think superconductors are quite alien, but if you are familiar with the Large Hadron Collider at all, this uses a 30-kilometer giant ring of superconducting magnet. If you've had an MRI done, what you see there, that's a large superconducting magnet. These are actually already in use in uh, transmission lines. In Germany, this is a picture of the superconducting cable, a kilometer long length is already in use in Essen in Germany as part of the electrical grid. But to make this more ubiquitous, our superconductors have to be made more efficient to produce, easier to engineer, and they need to be able to work at higher temperatures than they currently do. But the potential is vast. Just in China, the electrical landscape is changing so rapidly. Hundreds of thousands of gigawatt kilometers of high voltage DC cable, what you see here, will come online by 2020. And superconductors can be a key component to make these very energy efficient. Um, if we look at current electric cabling, this is largely overhead AC cables. This just cannot sustain more electricity demand. Superconductors can be laid underground and carry five times as much power as conventional cables. But we need better materials. Why is it that we've been stuck for about two decades in this quest for better superconductors? It's because superconductors are complex quantum objects. We can think of electrons as dancers. And individual dancers perform individual actions that are predictable, we can understand. But in an ensemble, these lead to exotic, very different effects from individual electrons. And superconductivity is an ensemble quantum effect that we don't understand very well. So trying to make superconductors from scratch we don't understand them very well, and we don't know where to look for them. It's a little bit like trying to assemble an IKEA wardrobe with not very good instructions. So how do we instead create superconductors by design? At the moment, it's quite a process of serendipity where we hope they show up. How do we change this to a design process? So what we've discovered is that we can carefully select existing non-superconductors and predict which ones are on the brink of being superconducting, then apply external forces to them, make this into a superconductor. So this is me using a very large magnet, one type of external force which can change materials. For superconductors, applied pressures are crucial. So this is a diamond anvil cell that exerts high pressures very much like the tip of a stiletto heel. But to get to the high pressures we need, we need higher pressure, so the tip we make it very small, the size of a human hair. This way we can reach pressures up to that of the Earth's core. So what we did in our laboratory is to start with an unexceptional magnet, it's an iron-based material, apply pressures to it, uh, uh, approaching that of the ocean floor, and discovered this transformed into an exceptional superconductor. It's the same material, under pressure. So this is a directed way of creating superconductors. It's like quantum alchemy. The promise of this is vast. Starting from the current very few isolated examples of superconductors, if we design more superconductors in a directed way, we can move to an entire landscape of superconductors and find a directed route to select those which have optimal engineering capacity, optimally high temperatures, and are economic. Looking more broadly, superconducting chips, which have absolutely no power dissipation, can transform smart technology. Uh, superconducting motors, with, which are gearless and very light, these are already in use in wind turbines, and this can be used in motors in electrical aircraft. 
Clearly, electrical aircraft are important for carbon reduction, and it's very promising that Airbus has already committed by 2020 to developing surface electrical aircraft. These are dependent on superconducting motors. So looking ahead, it's clear that the widespread adoption of superconductors is crucial for a carbon-reduced future. The question to you as industry and policy makers is, how do we accelerate this process? How do we make it a reality? Thank you.